got a harsh reminder today of just how reliant we are on critical digital connections. Disrupted after a major network issue with Rogers made it impossible to make a call, send a text, or even make cashless payments. Some flock to cafes and restaurants to get on their Wi-Fi today. And some businesses still recovering from pandemic losses were forced to take cash only. Rogers says our wireless services are starting to recover and that it will be proactively crediting all customers, acknowledging today we let you down. Some of those feeling most let down, thousands of concert goers excited to see Canadian singer The Weeknd at Toronto's Rogers Centre tonight, who learned the show was cancelled because of the outage just an hour before it was scheduled to start. And we thought, oh, it's time to open the doors and get in, and then they just say, we can't, like, it's going to be postponed, and I just start bawling. I flew from Montreal all the way. I think everyone here is in shock. Our coverage begins with CTV's Chris Najkate. From coast to coast, millions of Rogers customers woke up to a massive service outage, causing major headaches for morning commuters. I went to the gas station. I couldn't use my debit or credit card. When the service goes down, you realize how much you actually do rely on it. Jordan Andrichuk was relying on it in Calgary. He ran out of gas on his way to work and had to run back home on foot to find his change jar. We just dump it out on the ground and start counting it all, hoping we got enough to get us both to work. Some offices had no internet and phone services. Tried to connect to my morning meeting, couldn't get a hold of my bosses, I couldn't connect to the internet. Many businesses saw a major drop in sales. 80% of my transactions are debit cards. Police in some areas warned Rogers customers were also having difficulty in calling emergency services like 911. If you can't connect, please keep calling. Um, we, in the event of an emergency, um, please use a landline, utilize other service providers. Service Canada and Canada Revenue Agency reported outages to their call centers. It is anything that's connected in with the Rogers infrastructure so you have VoIP lines you have um, equipment uh, medical equipment in some cases an RBC spokesperson says the Rogers outage has impacted all financial institutions in Canada including interact services and work is underway to fix the issue as quickly as possible Rogers Communications says there is still no word on what exactly caused the outage. Is this going to be uh, a one-hour problem or a six-hour problem or is this, this going to take a week? We have no idea. Other major telecom companies reported no problems. Bell, which owns CTV, says its network is operating properly. However, connections to and from Rogers networks may be disrupted. Calls and texts between Bell customers or to other providers are not impacted. While Talis also noted some customers may experience issues when calling or texting Rogers customers. This is the second time Rogers has had a major outage of this kind. Last year, its wireless and cable networks went down, and during that time, it was due to a software update. Omar. All right, Kreeson, thank you. Now, tomorrow, the agency that regulates telecommunications in this country will meet with Rogers. Today, it also couldn't make any calls. The CRTC tweeted, please note our phone lines are affected by the Rogers network outage. Life was also harder for air travelers today, trying to make connecting flights while being disconnected. CTV's Adrian Gobriel was at Toronto's Pearson. Flying is frustrating enough these days. Traveling without access to a phone or internet simply too much for some, especially those grounded without their luggage. I lost four luggage with my kids. I have anything. I have any my drugs. I have any my girl toys. The Rogers outage further compounding the lost baggage woes, according to multiple staff inside Canada's busiest airport. I'm very frustrated. I'm tired. We found Heather Clark and her husband staring helplessly at the baggage carousel at Pearson International Airport. They woke up bright and early, unaware their AM flight out of Victoria, B.C. was delayed five hours. Was your phone working this morning when you got up? No, it was not. The lengthy travel day only got longer when they arrived at Pearson. Where's my luggage? We got my husband's luggage, but not mine. Figuring out how to call a ride will be their next great adventure. We're pretty well stranded. 
The Canadian Border Service Agency flagging that some might have issues accessing the Arrive Can app upon entry. However, it was a different story in departures, where other than the standard long lines, it was otherwise business as usual. In a statement, airport officials claiming that they were experiencing only minor impacts from the Rogers outage. Though we found no shortage of passengers who disagree. Yes. How are we getting home and when are we getting home? It feels like the dark ages today. It does feel like the dark ages today. Just in case the day wasn't difficult enough for some travellers, Air Canada notified its customers that some of its call centres were affected today because of the Rogers outage. Omar. Lots of frustration. Adrian Gobriel in Toronto, thanks. Canada's industry minister spoke with Rogers CEO today to share the government's frustration. Uh, priority number one is to restore service to Canadians. This is obviously uh, unacceptable. We'll be investigating that uh, to make sure it does not happen again. The minister is in Japan for trade talks, but today the country was in mourning as world leaders expressed horror and sadness following the assassination of former Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe, the country's longest serving. The murder has shocked the country where gun control is strict and shootings are extremely rare. In the U.S. last year, more than 45,000 Americans died from gun violence. Japan reported only one fatality. A key question tonight, how did an armed man make it past Abe's security and get close enough to kill him? Here's CTV's Genevieve Beauchemin. A most un-Japanese act of violence, say many in the country. Shinzo Abe was delivering a campaign speech outside a train station when a gunman shocked the world. Bullets pierced the ex-leader's neck and heart. His wife of more than three decades, Aki, rushed to be by his side in hospital where he was declared dead. The country's current prime minister called the assassination barbaric. In the midst of an election, this dastardly event took place, said Fumio Kishida. During his eight years and eight months tenure, Abe carved a legacy as a political giant. It's going to be an equivalent of JFK's assassination day. People would be talking um, years ahead. Influential, though controversial. Two million more women employed. He was known for his Abenomics, a policy aimed at propping up the economy. He also faced protests as a divisive conservative, ultra-nationalist, and for pushing Japanese military might after 70 years of post-war pacifism. He was also a jet-setting diplomat, building Japan's position on the world stage. Today, the UN held a moment of silence. Always a pleasure to sit down with Shinzo Abe. And Prime Minister Justin Trudeau called him a strong leader. He was a great friend and a partner to Canada. A sign of that friendship in this light moment three years ago, he installed a souvenir from Canada at his lakeside home near Tokyo. The suspect seen here moments before the shooting is 41-year-old Tetsuya Yamagami, who claimed he had worked for the Navy and said he held a grudge against a group linked to Abe. Police say the double-barreled murder weapon was homemade. All the more stunning in Japan, where gun violence is nearly non-existent. An isolated event, but one that killed one of the most transformative figures in Japanese history. Omar. All right, Genevieve, thanks. A major shakeup at one of Canada's biggest oil and gas companies tonight. Suncor CEO Mark Little is stepping down and resigning from the board. No reason was given, but the announcement comes a day after a contractor was killed at a Suncor mine near Fort McMurray. The company's safety record was called into question earlier this year when a major investor called for changes to Suncor's board and a review of its executive management. Suncor's head office is in Calgary, and that's also where the candidates trying to lead the Conservative Party are tonight. But as they try to score political points at the Stampede, the controversy over Patrick Brown's disqualification for allegedly breaking election financing rules is still hanging over the race. Here's CTV's Ottawa Bureau Chief Joyce Napier. While Conservative leadership candidate Pierre Poilievre campaigned at the Stampede... Well, ladies and gentlemen. Three other contenders were also in Calgary taking part in armchair discussions. Good luck on the campaign trail. Thanks. This, while the tug-of-war continued today between ousted candidate Patrick Brown and the party, with sniping on both sides. In a letter to members this morning, the Conservative Election Committee wrote, Our party received credible, verifiable information alleging serious wrongdoing in the Patrick Brown leadership campaign. 
The Brown campaign knew full well what the allegations were. Any suggestion to the contrary is simply incorrect. It hasn't been a good few days for the Conservative Party in terms of our brand when there's serious allegations like the one that have been brought forward. I mean, it's not good. Brown's legal team firing back this afternoon, saying there was no breach to the Elections Act and has asked for more details of the allegations, but they say the party remains unresponsive. It appears that you have taken the time to speak to the media and to send communications out to your membership about your expulsion of Mr. Brown, but you have yet to respond to our July 6 letter regarding Mr. Brown's appeal. In June, a Brown campaign organizer said the candidate arranged for her to be paid by a private company while working for his campaign. Deborah Jodouin, a veteran Tory operative, became uncomfortable with the arrangement and eventually told the party, and Brown was expelled from the race. She's worked for Patrick on, on leadership campaigns before. The fact that she would, um, the fact that she felt the need to go to Leoc with this, I think, speaks to the seriousness of it. Or as much as anything. And now Brown's lawyer, who is appealing the party's decision to kick him out of the race, is asking the party to set a date for that hearing no later than tomorrow at noon, Omar. The political saga continues. Major developments this week. Joyce Napier in Ottawa tonight. Joyce, thanks. In the U.S. Capitol today, President Joe Biden signed an executive order aimed at protecting abortion rights under pressure to act after the landmark Supreme Court decision overturning Roe versus Wade. Biden said the order will expand access to abortion pills and emergency contraception, protect patient privacy, ensure emergency care for those who are pregnant, and allow free legal counsel for patients seeking abortions and those providing it. Well, I wish it had not come to this. This is the fastest route available. The executive order is limited. There is no action the president can take to restore the nationwide right to abortions after the Supreme Court's decision. And one of the world's richest people has decided to back out of a major business deal. Elon Musk is pulling the plug on his $44 billion takeover of Twitter. Musk says he wasn't given enough data on fake accounts. The agreement included a $1 billion breakup fee, but the social media giant says that's not good enough and is willing to take him to court to buy the company or pay the full amount. Coming up, Tamara Leach denied bail. <laughs> Supporters seethe after the Freedom Convoy organizer loses a legal battle. It's time to get outdoorsy. It's hot. And Waker has got just what you need. We need a rug. That's the one, yeah. Yeah, we're feeling outdoorsy. Save on outdoorsy furniture, decor, and more. You're so outdoorsy, honey. What do you, what do you want? I'll spend less on everything outdoorsy at Wayfair.ca. Wayfair, you've got just what I need. He's loved the Big Mac for as long as he can remember. Since this very moment, actually. Do you remember your first bite feeling? Well, the feeling is back, but bigger. The Grand Big Mac. More beef, more sauce, more to love. My baby's got a sensitive stomach. My baby needs something for her skin. Have you tried Hill's Science Diet, Sensitive Stomach and Skin? It's gentle on dogs' tummies and helps nourish their skin and coats. PetSmart, anything for pets. What makes Febreze car vent clips different? Febreze has steady release technology. Just click, install, and boom! Febreze uses your fan to circulate freshness that won't overwhelm or fade for up to 40 days of consistent scent. Febreze car. Flossing is essential to remove plaque, and now there's a way to remove two times more. Try Gum Dual Defense Twisted Floss. With two textured strands, it covers 30% more surface area and removes two times more plaque for a cleaner, fresher mouth. Try Gum Dual Defense. Dad, why do we always have to park so far out? Gotta protect the car, son. Don't want any fender bender. You can't always avoid accidents, but you can avoid stressful accident claims. Well, I didn't see that coming. TD Insurance Auto Centers. Claims advisors, repairs, and rentals. The only shop that can handle all your auto claim needs in one place. TD Insurance, ready to help you move forward. 
In just over two weeks, Pope Francis will make a historic visit to Canada, and tonight there's a warning about a scam ahead of his arrival. Organizers of the Papal Mass in Edmonton say tickets to the event are free, but being sold online for up to $200, calling it sad and troubling that anyone would do this for an event with the Pope as part of a pilgrimage of healing, reconciliation, and hope. And a key organizer of the so-called Freedom Convoy will stay behind bars as she awaits trial. A justice of the peace called Tamara Leach a risk to public safety, ruling she violated her bail terms last month. CTV's senior political correspondent Glenn McGregor on the reaction. Outside the courthouse, disappointment and anger from supporters. After Ottawa protest organizer Tamara Leach was denied bail, Ms. Leach has chosen to exercise her freedom by not following the court-ordered non-contact condition, ruled Justice of the Peace Paul Harris, ordering her to stay in jail to maintain confidence in the administration of justice. How is your, how is your client feeling right now? Her lawyer promised a quick appeal. Uh, understandably disappointed with the, uh, with the result and uh, wanting to regain her freedom as soon as possible. Leach was arrested in February at the end of the Ottawa occupation and faces charges of intimidation, mischief and obstructing police. She was released on bail with the condition she not contact other convoy organizers. In Toronto last month, she was seen in a photograph and video with convoy spokesman Tom Marazzo. Thank you, Tamara. After she accepted a freedom award. Leach's lawyer argued the contact was allowed under the bail terms because her legal counsel was at the gala. The, will never... the justice called that absolutely ridiculous and said he was also concerned by text messages showing Leach had discussed a convoy plan to gridlock Ottawa. The court sent a very clear message today. The court has had enough of her playing footsies with her conditions, dancing around them. Leach is now back in the correctional facility where another protest organizer, Pat King, has been held for nearly five months awaiting his trial. She's a political prisoner. Their ongoing detention enraging protesters who consider them heroes. I'm ashamed to call myself Canadian today because this is wrong. This is wrong. Leach's supporters say they'll continue to push for her release and promise another protest next week outside the detention center where she's being held. Glenn McGregor, CTV News, Ottawa. Still ahead, from premier to patient, BC's John Horgan reveals his experience with the healthcare system and his multi-billion dollar ask of Ottawa. I'm Pauline Chan. Straight ahead, music fans flood the area around the Rogers Centre after a last-minute weekend cancellation and a family lawsuit over a fatal police shooting in 2020. Toronto's number one news is next. The Amazing Race Canada, all new, Tuesday at 9, 8 central, only on CTV. She's having the best time. I've had to say no a lot over the last couple of years. Yes to everything today. Cotton candy, those mini donut thingies, and all the rides. Okay, okay, one more time. Now I'm not even thinking about money. The CIBC app makes it easy to stay on track so we can spend summer how we want to. CIBC, ambitions made real. 80% of bacteria in your mouth aren't even on teeth. 80%? Colgate Total is different. It fights bacteria in your whole mouth, protecting 100% of your mouth surfaces. Colgate Total, antibacterial protection for a healthier mouth. <laughs> it's astounding. Time is fleeting. Madness takes its toll. Just a jump to the left. Want your clothes to smell freshly washed all day without heavy perfumes? Now they can with Downy Light in Wash Freshness Boosters. Just pour a capful of beads into your washing machine before each load to give your laundry a light scent that lasts longer than detergent alone with no heavy perfumes or dyes. Finally, a light scent that lasts all day. Downy Light, available in four naturally inspired scents. 
I was at that show when I saw him. He was. So, so hot, you should have seen the look on his face. Face it, you really missed out on the best time ever. With Amex, it's never a question of if, it's when. Closed captioning of this program is brought to you in part by Aleve. Just one pill gives fast-acting, long-lasting pain relief. Aleve, one pill, 12 hours. The pandemic has exposed critical gaps in Canada's health care system. Emergency wait times are at record highs in some parts. Frontline workers are so burned out they're quitting. And an estimated 5 million Canadians don't have access to a family doctor. When Canada's premiers meet in Victoria on Monday, they'll renew that push to Ottawa to increase its share of health care costs from 22 to 35 percent, representing about $27 billion a year. Joining me now is B.C. Premier John Horgan, who is also chairing next week's Premier's Summit. Premier Horgan, good to have you on. You are not only premier but you are also a patient first bladder cancer then throat cancer and are now thankfully cancer free what was the biggest shock for you going through the health system well th thanks for having me on and and of course it's been quite a journey for me personally and to see the uh, the strain and the wear on the faces of our healthcare professionals from the admissions desk right through to surgery and post-op and and then into treatment uh, it sends a warning signal certainly to me that I want to echo across the country. Our system is in crisis and we need to together collectively stand up and do something about it. The premiers, as mentioned, are urging Ottawa to boost spending, but money is a finite resource. You can either raise revenue by increasing taxes or cut other programs. Which method are you endorsing? Well, my view is that we are uh, one of the richest countries in the world. Our public health care system is the envy of certainly North America. It separates us from our, our, our cousins to the south. And if we are going to protect, preserve and enhance our publicly funded health care system, we need to make these investments. Now, next week's meeting could have been an opportunity to make a personal plea to the...